Hello, my name is Danny Nolan, I'm the, and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies, and welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner combined with a Chassis Sim tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to talk to you about is aero modeling in Chassis Sim, tips and tricks when things don't go to plan. Now, creating aero maps in Chassis Sim is actually one of Chassis Sim's most powerful features. It has saved not just my neck, but the neck of multiple customers in the Chassis community who have used this extensively. That being said, from time to time, you're gonna be dealing with situations that do not go to plan. This could be caused by testing in non-ideal situations. It could be a badly conditioned data set. It could be a combination thereof. So what we're gonna be talking about in this tutorial is how to recognize this and more importantly, how you deal with it. Okay, so here's an example of what happens when the arrow toolbox doesn't work out. So let me draw your attention to the average outputs of the Chassim Aero Modeling Toolbox. So here we've got a situation, CLA is about 1.31, but take a look at the average CDA, which is 4.976, and the average arrow balance was about 0.56. Here, the drag and the arrow, uh, the drag and the arrow balance are just uh, are not uh, are far from ideal. That's your red flag to go, hey, you know what, something's not quite right here. Now, this was, from a, uh, this was from a job that I worked on recently, and this was a combination of testing on a non-ideal circuit combined with um, some uh, combined with some um, data that was um, a little bit off. So when you deal with a situation like this, a really good backup here is the track replay option in the error molding toolbox, and that's highlighted here in um, by the red. So what will th this will do is that you need to create a curvature file, your bump profile, and your altitude um, road camber file. Load, the, uh, load those in, and then you run this. And effectively what it does is it leverages off the chassis sim open loop track replay simulation to generate a file called CLA underscore AV underscore smart underscore DL underscore model dot down. And what that does is it pulls out both the CLA and the aero balance. Now, the thing it doesn't calculate is um, the drag, and that's just a bit of a quirk um, with um, the track replay um, open loop uh, simulation. But what this does is it does two things. Number one, it forms a backup to when um, the results in the aero analysis results dot that don't work out. But more importantly, it's a great little sanity check for both the downforce and um, the error balance that you get from the error analysis results dot that. And because we're using the track replay simulation, we can dig down a little bit more in depth um, to that. So it's a so not only is it a great backup, it's also a great sanity check. So this is something that is very much worth your while checking out when you're doing your error modeling. Okay. Let's now talk about surface fit options. Now, in chassis sim, when you're doing your error modeling, you've got two options. You go here to click here to optimize um, the error map, which is highlighted in the red, and the green is generate error map from the error toolbox results. So let's talk about both of these options. Now, the optimize error map, it uses the error map surface fitting that we've spoken about in some previous tutorial. We also talk about this in great length in um, the chassis sim uh, boot camps. The other option, the green option, is the generate error map, and that just uses a simple second order surface fit. So, which should you be using this option? Okay, so you use the uh, you get you default to the error map surface uh, fitting option when you've got a lot of when you've got a lot of data, and particularly if you've done runway testing or if you've got your main straight on a circuit that's really really long. Your error uh, your error map surface fit is your first go to because it uses some pretty sophisticated techniques in terms of isolating out the various um, aero characteristics of um, the race car. That being said, if the aero map surface fit doesn't work out, it could be some data that hasn't worked out, it could be uh, so the fact that we haven't sampled enough ride heights, your default is to go to the second order surface fit. Now, that uses a simple second order um, XY um, curve fit. Now, where that really shines is that within the model data, it is bulletproof. So that really is your good backup option if the error map surface fit doesn't quite work out for you. Okay, refining the error map results. Now, here's the thing about an error map. You're only going to be as good as the data that you have modeled. So if you've got sort of a narrow band of front and rear ride height, 
you're not going to have an awful lot of confidence to interpolate that map, off, uh, map out. And from time to time, you're going to be dealing with a situation like this. So what we've got here is within the model data, it's actually quite good. But you can see as we go to the extremes of this, and, and I've sort of exaggerated this a little bit. As we go to the extremes, what you can see is that it doesn't exactly correlate with the rest of the map. Indeed, they're actually a lot higher. Now, that is just the nature of the fact that out here we don't have any data, so we're guessing. That being said, you are totally at liberty to modify this. Don't treat the results you're getting from Chassis Sim as a facsimile from God Almighty, Yahweh, Buddha, Muhammad, etc., etc., Allah, whatever um, deity you pray to, as sacrosanct. This is a calculator. It's designed to get you into the ballpark, and then it's up to you to use that data to maximum effect. So if you've got to modify that, feel free to modify that. The other thing, too, is that from time to time, you're going to have to use the lap time simulation to help you dial in the drag results. And where particular this makes its presence felt is when you need to do a sanity check in terms of when you're starting to modify the wing levels. Now, most of the time, the aero modeling toolbox will return a reliable result for you. But if you look at that going, oh, hang on, that looks a little bit high, don't blink about going through and manually changing um, the CDA results when you're sweeping through your wings. And what you're looking for is that you're looking to make sure that the current, that the end straight speed of your longest stra- of the longest straight is identical to what you're dealing with from the actual data. And I cannot stress this enough. What you're dealing with chassis sim is a calculator. It's not a magic wand. So use this as such. Okay, wrapping a few bits and pieces, uh, wrapping this, uh, wrapping this up. Okay, when things don't work out in the Aero Toolbox, you do have options. There is the error results from the track replay, and there are also workarounds in terms of drag and aero surface fitting. But I cannot stress this point enough, and listen to me really, really carefully on this. Ultimately, Chassis Sim is a calculator. It is not a magic one. And indeed, one of the great traps I'm seeing right now in computer-aided engineering is that, oh, we've got a data set. Let's hit a magic button. We want a magic answer. Sadly, the world does not work that way. The, what these tools will get you, in, what these tools will do is they'll get you into the ballpark. However, it is up to you, the end user, when, particularly when you're doing modeling, to make sure that the results make sense. And if you've got to modify them a little bit, by all means, do so. And if you use it in that light, you're going to find things like the error modeling toolbox, the tire force modeling toolbox are going to be incredibly powerful tools. However, if you treat it as a magic wand, you will be forever doomed to disappointment. So on that note, we will conclude this tutorial and we'll catch you in the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner or the next Chef Sim video.